Hi guys, it's been a while since they did a video with regards to the Raspberry Pi or should I say the IoT box or stroke POS box, what it used to be called back when it was UDU 11 um, before that. From UDU 11 onwards they changed it to IoT box and UDU kind of took it away and said that you could only connect an IoT box up to the Enterprise Edition which would then cost you around about 25 euros a month per IoT license or what would be supplied as a, a, a token so that you can actually use the IoT box on the enterprise system. Of course that's going to be quite costly but now Udo 15 community editions come along we're going to have another go. Right, so I've dug out my Raspberry Pi 2 Model B version 1.1 from the cupboard and I'm going to flash it with the latest IoT box software. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. First off, we've got our little 8 gigabyte um, memory card that's going to be plugged into this device here. We've got a 5 volt supply connected here to our Raspberry Pi, which I've got plugged into the back of my monitor just now. And I've got a HDMI lead there, which plugs back into the back of the HDMI port on the monitor which will be the customer facing display okay so here we go what do we do right All right we need to open up a new tab on our display on our browser and type in nightly or you do iot box okay just like that and Google comes up with this nightly.udu.com and it'll be slash master slash IoT box. Okay, so that would be that there. So once you get to there, you would download the, the latest image that we've got and that would be the 29th of November 2021. Now, if you've got a USB flashing piece of software uh, already, I can recommend one which is Etcher okay which is called Valenta Etcher okay and you can flash it flash it you can download it and install it on any um, operating system whether it be Mac Windows or Linux okay so once you've downloaded that and installed it and you've got it up and running we will go on to the next step now obviously once it's opened up, what we need to do is take that little um, SD card, put it into the adapter that we've got, and then plug that into the back of your machine. Do that. And you would then flash that file. But firstly, I need to make sure that there's nothing on that um, SD card. Now I use a piece of software called um, Partition Manager. It's entirely up to you what, what you use. Obviously on, on, on Linux I can use that. There's also one on Ubuntu called Files where you can actually just sort of like me format the, the drive. But I'll just bring that into display there. And you can see here this MMCBLKO is the SD card that I've got there. And you can see that um, it's got two partitions. It's got a boot partition and a root FS partition. Okay. Um, so what, what you do, obviously, to, to clear it is that you delete both of the, these partitions off, which I could do just now. I'll mount them first. It does help. Like that and then I can delete those partitions which will give us a full um, capacity on our SD card. Now an 8 gigabyte one I'd say is the minimum to go don't go anything lower than that uh, because if you do obviously try to flash the Udo IoT box image onto it currently sits at 3.7 gigabytes um, so it could potentially be a little bit more than that. Okay, so I'm just going to set myself up a new partition. And I'm just going to do it as a fat 
bring it to okay and i'm going to utilize the whole disk and i'm just going to call it sd card if you're using windows then you can just like um for, format the drive there um but you'll probably find if you're trying to format it on a windows system because it's essentially a, an arm device it's going to repartition the hard drive or repartition the sd card as an ext um four okay uh where windows can't really read that sort of stuff so you'd need some kind of partition in software to be able to do that so i'll just apply apply those changes shouldn't take too long to do depending on how big your sd card is Okay, and I'm going to click OK on that. So that's now formatted and that's been mounted for us now. So if I go into Flash in my file, you can see that I've got the IoT box image there already. So basically, what I did was clicked on the zip, downloaded that, and then um, opened up the archive and extracted the image onto my desktop. Okay, so you need some kind of archive um, manager which unzips that uh, zip folder to drag out the image for you. Okay, so I can go flash from file. If I go to desktop, I'm going to click on here. To open that there. Select my target drive, which my which is my SD card. Don't select anything else because if you select anything else, that's obviously your file system and any other uh, device that's connected. So you make sure that you're selecting this one here. Okay. Click next and then click flash. Now, before it starts anything, you'll probably get some kind of authentication pop up. So you need to pop in a password in there to actually start the flashing. Now it takes about, about six minutes or so. But you most definitely will get an error show up at the end, but that's fine, all right, because it's going to work. So whilst that's happening, then we're going to go about getting we do up and running. Now, what I've done is set up a, a new instance of Udo on my system. Okay, so we're just going to call this one IoT box test. Oh, max test. Box test like that underscore it doesn't like dashes in it email i just put my name in there and give myself a password so i can log in and a phone number and select my language and my country now it's essential that you get the country bit right because wait if you set up an accounting on the udu then it will set the accounting up with reference to your core country okay so we can then go ahead and create our database there so it's just going to be a, a blank blank database okay so that takes a minute or two to do now the reason why i'm doing this video is because um since a lot last time it was for pulse box but now it's for iot which is like internet of things but basically it does the same as what it did before um which is ideal for people that are starting up a shop and they've not got a till um but they've acquired themselves a printer with a drawer and they, they just want to use a, a tablet that they've borrowed off of their, their child after christmas <laughs> <laughs> so you use it as a touchscreen device in their store so that they could sell stuff you know, say like a burger van or something um, and you could uh, keep keep a track of all your stock and stuff with, with that right so anyway once that's opened up we're going to install the POS software okay which is the point of sales now when that installs that also installs the inventory module along with 
uh, the invoicing module as well. It's just a basic invoicing module that it installs. That's so it takes a, a minute or two to install on your system. Now, if you look at my previous videos that I've done, you'll see there's many, many different ways that I've installed Udo um, on cloud servers, on your yeah, bare metal, um, and also using the latest and greatest that I like is uh, use Docker to um, in install uh, an in instance of Udo so I can easily um, tear it down if I want to and start again but that's from a developer's perspective but you can use it in production as well and it's very fast to get up and running so we just wait for that to finish whilst that's doing that we're just going to keep a track on what's going on with our installation okay we've got two minutes to go there Now I'll try and keep this video as short as I can because all the other ones tend to kind of run on a bit. Maybe I'm just getting old and talk too much these days. Then I'm slowing down a bit. So I ask you to be patient because it's still loading the modules and once that's done it should come back to the sort of like a discussion chat screen which is just a way to do right now still got about a minute to go for the for that to install now the great thing that i like about udo 15 is that it's much more responsive in regards to um, the different screen sizes you see there how it changes it there's very responsive so you can look at mailboxes chat and channels and stuff there I sometimes ask you to refresh the appearance um, so the back end is more responsive than it used to be as well so you can actually do all of your work and stuff using a, a tablet even in the community edition which I think is great uh, you click on this tab in the top corner there and it'll show you the modules that are installed so we go on to point of sales now obviously before we start to sell anything we need to actually create ourselves a product right so we're going to add some products or a product um oh, we just use cheeseburger right let's do that cheese oops oops cheeseburger we're going to sell it we're not purchasing it because obviously we're making it from our little greasy spoon calf that we got and there's our, our burger there <laughs> okay um if you want to do stock control you can do put it as a stockable product yeah so you can then manage the stuff like the inventory levels and so however much cheese you got however many burgers you got however many uh buns you've got um you can keep a track of that and you can keep the track of all the dates and stuff so Udo is very good for that sort of thing um we're just going to run through the basics today right guys so we're going to set a price for it so we're going to give ourselves a price of three pound fifty and we're going to charge our customers tax because we need to pay it and it'll show you there how much including uh, vat it's charged to the customer okay and the all up cost of us to make that burger is probably say a pound um all product categories well we're just going to put it through the pause right we're not going to put it through sellable sell expenses it's not going to go through pause okay uh internal reference we can just call it burger one classic yeah And if you had a barcode reader, you can set barcodes against it if you want to, any kind of stock control sort of thing. 
and then save that information. A couple other things we need to do if we go into, into the sales area. So if we edit that there, you can see there that we can put products available in the POS. Okay, we can also set them to do they need to be weighed. So if you had a load of bananas or apples, uh, and they get weighed or potatoes, then you'd select that there. And your IoT box would most definitely have uh, set scales connected to them as well. Right? So that would come up on the screen to, to, to weigh them. And your IoT box will control your scales for you. We need to set a category in there. So we just call it food. Okay. Which is all great. Obviously, inventory wise, we don't need to worry about any of this because it's kind of like back office, kind of warehouse sort of stuff, or wherever your storage location is. Okay. And you've got different operation routes in there as well. So if you're doing anything sort of like buy to order, so you can like buy, order, and then set up different routes in there as well. Accounting, if you have the accounting software installed, we could um, deal with the accounting side as well. So we can save that. If you wanted to print out any labels, you can print out some labels and stuff because it gives you the, all this lovely sort of like label printing facility there and you put in ex extra content in there as well. Um, you can just say classic cheeseburger. And then if you was producing that mass mass producing that for a big company, then um, you'd be able to send out product labels as well along with that. Okay, this bit here is initial setup for anything to be printed. It, you'll always get this uh, documentation layout screen come up. So we're going to add a logo. There we are. Company, and you can see there what it does. It picks the best colors that it thinks it needs to get your logo and creates this nice sort of like invoice for you if you wanted to do any kind of invoicing of sorts or you can up upload a background image uh, if you want to so I can upload um, burger <laughs> it's not that I want to right um, <coughs> excuse me you can put some company details in there, like your tagline, and, you, and obviously you'd have your name and address in there as well. And you put in the footer there, that's obviously your phone number, uh, but you put wherever you want into there. But once you're happy with the layout, oh, I'll that. All oh, right, it's because I said custom, I just leave those blank. I'll just save that. Not too worried about configuring any layouts of any documents there. Oh, okay, there's my product label there now. Um, wherever it's gone. There we go. That's a product label. So you can put it on a on a shelf. So if you've got a shop um, and you've got your barcode, it shows you there how much the price is. However, it's not included the VAT. Right? That's kind of like uh, before that price there. So if you wanted to include um, your VAT, I think you'd need to have, to have sales installed to be able to do that. Maybe do. Okay, so you can see that you've got your product there. Now, if you look at your products, and I did just there, which are available in POS. So anything that you can spend from the point of sale screen, okay? Anything else, like your discount and tips, um, they've been hidden away from the POS, right? These, because they're like the default sort of things. Um, this is sell the POS there. See, it's not available in the POS. If I wanted to make it available, I could, right, at any time. And then it gives you the option there to weigh the product and put it into a POS category. And so if you wanted to uh, 
say for instance you wanted any tips if people wanted to tip you then there's a tip section but i don't see how that tip section works too well through that sort of thing right um so you've got the fills there available in pods which is your cheeseburger which is wonderful right um okay so let's go now over to our sd card and see what's going on there right now you see what's happened here it's come up saying attention something went wrong if it's compressed image please check that the archive is not corrupt cannot read the prop property message or null every time i burn that onto the disk i always get that come up don't worry about it just press cancel okay and then close that off okay because we're not going to worry about it okay so i'm just going to take the sd card out the back of our machine and i'm going to plug it into my raspberry pi First off, I'm going to dis I'm disconnecting the power first, guys. I'm doing you do this as I, as I speak, but I'm not going to on the screen because I need to hold the camera to actually show you what to do. Um, right, so there we go. Just one second. <laughs> you got a black box. Okay, so this is the back of the house. Okay, and you see there that little slot there that says micro SD card. That's where we're going to plug it into. Okay. So, so I'm just going to push that in there. It's going to feel like you're putting a SIM card into a or a micro SD card into a phone. You got a, there's a little bit of a resistant flick. Okay. Now the HDMI cable is actually plugged in. Um, I've also got a, I've not actually showed you that yet, have I? I've also got the USB um, Wi-Fi cut adapter plugged in there, okay, and that's the SD card in that slot there now, okay, so we're going to plug in this adapter into there, and then you'll see something come up on the screen in a moment. Just changing my monitor to the HDMI of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is booting up, it's got a little red light on it, and you'll get that on the screen. A very ghostly image of myself. It does that to start with, it takes about five seconds to boot, and then hopefully you'll get what you'd normally get with a Raspberry Pi in the top left hand corner all the raspberries and and then loads of comedy gook which is basically the way that uh, Linux likes to boot now that could take a little bit of time to boot up don't worry about some of the failed bits and pieces that's absolutely fine once it after it's booted up first time and configured itself then everything should be good to to move forward okay but we just need to get our raspberry pi connected or our iot box you'll say connected to the wi-fi
you can see there guys up in the top corner there's like a little lightning bolt and uh, that means they're like slightly underpowered uh, but it's just booting up the ui um, and it opens up on a, a browser screen so it does take a little while to to kick in about a minute or two and once it's done that you're going to see this screen here that says iot box and down in the bottom corner is this iot box interface and then an ip address of 10 11 12 dot one so that's what we're going to need to configure our iot box so if you're an it manager and you're wondering about the warehouse or well, the, the shop the, all the different till points um with your laptop that's the sort of information you're going to need okay okay guys so back on my desktop then um i've just moved over to the other screen because that's where my networks are now you can see here that i've got um a connection for the iot box right because it's sending out a pairing uh, wi-fi connection so i'm now just going to connect to that instead of my local area net network so once that's connected it should all be good so we'll open up let's just a, a new browser okay and once i'm obviously connected to our iot box i then need to put in the ip address of the IoT box that is that's sending out. Right, and by default, it will want to go to port 8069 slash and then steps. Right, so let's zoom in a bit. Now you can name that IoT box anything you want to. Or you can call it, I don't know, till one or name store, shop front, bar, whatever you want to call it. So we just it's the same bar. Burger bar. Right, so that's what we're calling it there. We don't need a token because server token is not mandatory for the community edition. And then we click next. Now, next you'll be expected to select your Wi Fi, which you can't actually do. Right. There's a little bug in this, guys. So there is a workaround for it, but it's a very dirty workaround, and it's one that I've discovered. Um, that is, um, we need to kind of like edit this configuration page. So how are we going to do that? If you're using something like Firefox, you can, or Google, you can just right click and in inspect. Okay. And when you inspect, it allows you to edit the source code. Right, so let me just zoom in there. Move all this out of the way. It allows you to edit the source code and all the different elements and that of the colored page. Now, as I hover over stuff, you can see the colors are changing above. Now, we're interested in the container part because it's kind of there if you know what i mean so we open that up and then we scroll down to where it says form because it's a form basically that we're filling in and then we go down into inside like configuration steps for wi-fi steps yeah so we're going to go into that oops got too far and we're going to go down inside that table inside the table body and then first table row that's the second table row you can see the difference here first table row click into there and then we're going to go into the table column there that's column one that's column two and then we've got this select bit now this is the bit that's causing us the grief right so all i need to do it's highlight on that first select bit and then just type in I need to double click it actually double click it right so it's kind of gone white 
and then just type in the word input and then click anywhere away then that would change to an input like that if you close that page or refresh that page it will go back to the select box again so we don't really want that so all i can do now is just close that off and i can input there what my um, wi-fi ssid is okay because it won't allow us to select it so i'm going to type it in now i know mine is this okay because i've already entered it before and it's, it's kind of like saved it um but you can actually it, that's by no means a drop down guys um that's just what's been saved previous right you see there it's, it's not anything right so it's in right what eight seven seven nine into there and then we pop in our password It's essential that you get that right guys because if you don't get it right your boxes iot box is a dumb device it's going to restart and it's going to try and log off to that wi-fi connection and you'll you'll have problems all right um you just have to reflash the device and start again right if you if you don't get your password right and then click connect it says nice your connection done now what's going to happen now is the uh, iot box um, doesn't want to go in there. Ah, right. I don't know why it's wanting me to ask my password there. Once it's trying to connect back up to your, your own password, that means it's rebooting again. And when it reboots, let me just connect that back there. bring this back up into to play it's going to look a bit funky on the screen uh you can see that uh, that's it's actually rebooting right guys um and it should boot back up with my wi-fi connection doesn't really matter if you if you're using ethernet you wouldn't have to go through this process okay so it's just a case of just plugging it in and go and, and away you away you are like right. so now we just wait for the black screen to disappear if it's uh been playing about with its settings it's a bit fuzzy it shouldn't be the camera's trying to auto focus goes white let's say it takes a minute or two for it to boot up so have patience guys right once you've got a pairing code and uh, you've also got like a in, the interface has changed um to your local area network you'll also get an ip address as well okay and you can do that to all of your iot boxes that you've got all right which i'm really really pleased with that it's kind of working this far okay so let's have a look and see if we pop in that IP address. Let's see what's uh, going to happen. Right, let's put in 192.168. Oops. 192.168. Now, if you just put the 0 0.43 it's going to come up saying forbidden okay because it does have nginx installed on it as well um but it kind of blocks you off with that 
particular IP address, so it's kind of like saving that that port is being hidden behind. Now you can see there that we've got um, the name of your IoT box, which is the burger bar. You can configure that and change the name if you want to. Again, don't worry about the server token. Uh, the problem you're going to get though is I don't know if that's if it's doing it to me if a TC I don't think that is that pairing code I don't know if that's the token I don't believe it is no that's nothing to do with it so once you've set the name that's it you've set the name <laughs> right uh, because the community edition doesn't use uh, server tokens right so you can't configure the, the server in that regard update you've got an update there you click on update so you can see what's going to update um you see the latest update there is to fix the mrp cancel leftover moves when create back orders but this is more like the Udo side of things, I guess. Yeah, it's little updates and stuff to um, tasks that have been fixed by the daily builds on Udo. So because it's, it says there, it says upgrade to 21.04, um, but here it's saying version 21.10. Right, so I'm just going to leave, leave that as it is just now. Leave that as is. It shows you the display that it's connected to. You can see that's the one monitor that it's connected to that. Uh, you can also go ahead and set up any printers for that particular I, IoT box. Right, so you can go there and do a printer searches and look for stuck jobs and stuff like that. Right, so it's a few bits that you can do with your IoT box. And you can also click on the display for the IoT box as well. All right. So you can, as an IT manager, you can pop in the IP address of the IoT box and it will come up, come up with the information on the screen what it's actually doing at that particular moment in time right which uh which is also very helpful so you don't have to go around and go yes that screen's working yes that screen's working you can look at it remotely and you can do remote debug as well uh, this allows someone who was All right, so you can do gate or remote access in as well. Okay, so anyway, as you're just a shopkeeper, you're not going to be too worried about that. As long as you've got your IoT box connected to your, your network, you can see it through your local area network because you're logged into your local area network, then that's all fine. Uh, we just need to go and configure your IoT box so we can actually see it. But let's just go to the dashboard just now, open up a new session without the IoT box, okay? So it just loads up, loads up products. Uh, you can put in all the content of what you've got in your till and then open up your session. You see in the top left, oops, the top left hand corner there, that there's only the administrator the wi-fi and the close button so whoever opened up that session can close that session you can have multiple members of staff working within that session but only the person that opened the session can close the session you can cash in cash out from here okay as well there's my food category that i've created and there's my, my sticky burger Okay, and there's the taxes that are on top there. So I can go and make, make a payment. It says, okay, please pay £4.20. Customer's like, is it worth that much? Say, well, yeah, 
So they give you a fiver and they get easy key change. So they can validate that. And then it shows a receipt there. So if you do have a, um, a receipt printer plugged in, then you can print the receipt. If not, um, just open up a slightly cash drawer. But if you've got a printer with a cash drawer connected to it, yeah, then you can print off, print the receipt and open the cash drawer or go to select for new order. All right, but it does show you, give you the a, a price value. Okay, and you can print, print the receipt. Okay, obviously if you've got a, a printer, that's a receipt printer, then it will just print out that portion there. But you get your lovely little company logo and information on it as well. Or you've got the option to email the customer if providing you've got your email client set up as well on Udi. So we're going to close that. Now that's as far as it goes. Customer doesn't know what you've just done on the screen there. It doesn't know what he's ordered. Right? This is why we've got a customer facing display. Right? So I can close that. So we uh, I'll keep the session open right? but I'm going to go to configure and then configure point of sales and then open up this one shop okay it says the session is currently open blah 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 there's cert certain things that you need to do to uh, to have the session closed before you can edit certain stuff but that shouldn't affect us okay now underneath the connected devices you've got iot box and you've got customer display now i'm sure you played with customer display where you if you've got say like a i don't know if you've got a touch screen or you've got a computer which has got a separate screen you've been using it that way then that's what you do and so for every um, session you've got open you need to have a separate display connected to that separate till so if you had three tails you'd have to have three different device three different um customer displays but if you were say like a bar you just wanted one one big display hanging in the center of the bar and you've got like three uh sales terminals they can all then share that one display using the iot box and that's the reason why we're doing this okay so we tick on that and then we put in the ip address of your IoT box. Okay. And then all the devices that you've got connected to the IoT box are all listed below. So if you've got a receipt printer, you probably have a cash drawer connected to that. Okay. If you've got a customer display, which is what we're doing now, then we would tick that box. If you've got electronic scales, if you needed the way stuff, we'd have that card reader, barcode scanner. Okay. And with, I've just got customer display connected, guys. Okay, I've not got any of the other bits and pieces because um, I just do this as a hobby now. You can do direct printing as well without an IoT box if you wanted to. So if you did do that and you did have, let's say, like a printer connected, Yeah, you do that click away it says you've got a cash drawer so you can just have um, that the cash drawer connected but it's, you don't have to have the, the customer display it's entirely up to you right? but we're not doing that we're all about the IoT box today so we hit save if I go back to my dashboard and if I hit continue selling, you'll probably see very, very briefly a pop up to say connected to IoT box. Okay, about there. See it? Right, well, you can see there, uh, it says your printer's offline. Uh, connection's not owned. Okay, printer's offline. Brilliant. Okay, if I press this connected but not owned, that knows. That tells me that the IoT box it knows it's connected to a monitor, all right? But for you on that particular session, you then need to take ownership of that. Right. So I'm going to do that just now. 
So let's turn on my display. See, <laughs> here's my mobile camera. Oops, that's been the wrong thing in it. I'm going to pop this down in this corner here. Right. Blink. There we are. Right, there's my IoT box there. Right. If I go click on connected, not owned, uh, like that, you can see there now that it's come up. However, however, it looks kind of not right. And you might be wondering why does it not look right? Yeah, because you've done everything right. <coughs> Excuse me. You done everything right. Um, or so you think. So let's just close that session off. Let's accept the fact that I've not taken any money. I've gone at a loss. Now let's see what's going on. Okay. The IoT box is on an IP address. Okay. So the I IoT box is expecting the sales terminal or the, 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 set, the server, the Udo server, to also be on an IP address or a fully qualified domain name. Now, local host is not a fully qualified domain name. Right. So need to find out what the IP address of the machine is. Now I know what the IP address of my machine is. Is that. And then it's got the 8069 at the end. And I just need to log back in with that. Thankfully I've got my password. Open that back up full screen. Good point of sales. And let's start a new session. So using lo local host is an ideal. Why does that do that? I don't know. Right, one second, guys. Okay, so I'm just starting up a new session. Okay, with the 192, the well, the IP address rather than local host. All right, the screen still sat like that. However, if I do this and there you go, connect it again, you can see there now that the POS screen has appeared. The reason why is because the uh, all of this style settings and stuff the IoT box kind of blocks it if it's looking on local host all right so you need to put the IP address in of the network that the IoT box is sat on or a fully qualified domain name okay otherwise it's just not going to work all right so now we can see that that's working there so if we put in there excuse me this is my voice we're putting their burger. Right. See, it's coming up there with a price of three pound fifty, but the total is shown four pound twenty. That's because the totals apply in tax, okay. Whereas the the cost of the burger isn't. So it's like how much it is without tax, how much it is with tax. So the customer can see what the the, the difference between what they're paying for VAT and not is. All right, so you can put that as many times as you like in there, and then go to pay for it. I mean, it's costing them a lot of money, All right? So it's 46 quid, 50 pound cash, and three pound 80 change, and that's what you get on your screen up here as well. All right, so once you're happy with that, you can then validate that. All right, guys. Um, if you've got a receipt printer and stuff connected, you can do that sort of stuff. Okay. 
and have a play about with your IoT box and do it that way. However, if you wanted to connect up additional IoT boxes, we could do you can do that. Let me just turn off uh, that little screen there. I'll show you what, what we can do in regards to that. Just close it. Set that and close the session. If you go to configuration and then you go to point of sales, okay, you can add additional tills in there, guys. That's fine. If I edit this and I'm going to set it up this time as a bar or restaurant, I can save that. Okay, if you scroll down, we've got order printers in here as well now. So if you click on that, I think it's options to add printer. So we click that and then we can add as many printers as we want. So if we, I don't know, if you like did food in a bar, right? So there'll be kitchen, it says use a printer connected to the IoT box. So you can have an IoT box in the kitchen. Okay. And you would put in the IP address of that IoT box there. Or if you've just got a, a network printer, you could have put a network printer address in there. Right, so I'll do that and then just say where possible whatever um, POS cat category is referring to the kitchen. Okay, it's anything to do with food. Then you select that. Okay, or it could be cooked food, hot food, any cold food and stuff could be just them set up by the salad bar or whatever. Okay, um, you can do it like that. But you put in a different IP address for a different IoT box. And then save that. And then you can add other printers as well. So we can have, I don't know, cocktail bar. Cocktail bar, you can have a different IO, a different IoT box, and then you could probably have another category for say like drinks. Oh. Oh. The cocktails. As and as you're doing all this. It's creating a new categories for you all the time. So if we did want to, um, okay, let's say that. If we did want to add another product, and I'm going to put it there. What's it called? Like tequila. Tequila sunrise or something. I've not got a picture for it. But we can make up a tequila sunrise. So standard rate attacks twenty percent, and that's going to cost a nine. Nine. Let's get lunch in. It's pretty fine, really. Uh, it costs us two pound to make. <laughs> Product category. Anything in the POS, right? You can set the internal references up if you want to. Um, then when we go to sales, pause, we need to edit the category there. And it says food, drinks, drinks, cocktails, right? Because it's automatically set up for you because you've already done it. Okay, so when we go there, I mean, it's going to throw up a load of bleepy bleepy noises at me now. I just know it. There we go. There's my pod screen. Right? Let's just open our session. 
you can see there if I just click on food you get food click on drinks you just get a drink so you click select that there that's your prices that are coming up hey to be right the paints change validate and what that would do is send off um, a receipt to the cocktail bar to make up your drinks if I've done it right I don't think I've saved off that session there no I did you can add floor and table designs as well to it but that's just another another subject okay guys I think I've pretty much done uh, what you can do with the IoT box there there is however an IoT based module which they did for UDU 12 community edition but it's just not been ported to UDU 15 yet um when it when it is then possibly we'll be able to use sort of like scales and calipers and stuff um so like if you're doing manufacturing as well all right so i do hope you found this rather intuitive informative and by sending your appreciation to this video just um, subscribe to us and comment on the video and if you've got any questions then let us know i don't take any money for any of this guys it's all a hobby so uh yeah thanks very much for watching and uh happy pausing <laughs>